while you're standing, put up uh, John chapter 10, verse 34. John chapter 10, verse 34, real quick. John chapter 10, verse 34. John chapter 10, verse 34. Jesus answered them. They were questioning Jesus. Jesus says, they said, you're blaspheming. You're talking like you are a god. And that's what they were telling Jesus because they were upset. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to stone him. Look what Jesus replied. He says, Jesus answered them. He said, is it not written in your law? Is it not written in the book you've been reading? Is it not written in the Torah? Is it not written in the prophets? Is it not written in the book that it says that you are what? You are what? I can't hear you. Now, if you've been in church any length of time, I will show you in here. Do you realize that? Everybody knows that that G is not capitalized? Everybody see that? But there's a big G. Everybody, we're not talking about a gangster. There's the big G, and then you got little. Now, I know it's hard for you to realize that, but I'm going to show you like a Philadelphia lawyer who you are. And the more you know who you are, the more you'll start overcoming all kind of things. I want somebody to do something real quick. I want everybody listening to this. I don't want you thinking about nothing else. I need you to focus on this. Because if I was the devil, I want to keep believers ignorant. I want them in church. I want them to come and hear information, but I don't want them to actually live it out. I want them to actually think that they are, but they're really not. So get rid of all distractions right now. Nothing else is important right now. Everybody got it? And you'll see what I mean in a second. You may be seated. Let's start out with John chapter 1, verse 1. Start out there, please. By the way, let's, let's see if we can make sure all this makes sense. And I'm t here's why I teach like this. Because when I grew up, when I grew up, my parents sent us to church. And going to church with my two older brothers, I hated it. Didn't like it. Growing up in New Orleans, I grew up in Holly Grove. And it's the same area where Dwayne Carter Jr. is from. That's Lil Wayne for you guys that don't know. My dad's the first college graduate on both sides of the family. From an education standpoint, my dad changed the family. But I got born again my junior year in college. It changed the game. Once I knew the God that knew me. But while growing up, I played football. I started playing football when I was four years old. And I loved the game. But it didn't make sense when I was going to church. It didn't make sense to, to pass, and I'm not knocking it. That's what we did at that time. And it, it planted seeds in me that have sprouted today. So I'm not knocking it. But I want you to understand why God has given us the vision to raise up a wise and what? Understanding people. But get this, and we'll make sure this is clear. Raise up a wise and understanding people who have a personal relationship with their Heavenly Father and with their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because that's what this is all about. It's about a what? Personal what? Personal. It's personal. You got to understand, when Jesus got on the cross, it was personal. Did y'all get that? Personal mean not religious, personal. And when I was in the church early on, it made no sense. Around 10, 11 years old, there was a lady that attended the church who had a heart for the community. So her name was Nanny Tate. Nanny would come by and pick up the kids throughout the neighborhood. And then she would bring us. Nanny Tate also... Uh, was the steward or the overseer of the foster care program. So this particular church had a foster home. And she usually had about 12 to 13 young people who were in a foster care system. And she cared about people that were not just in church. She really would pick us up. But when, she, when, we, when we would get dropped off, do y'all know some of the saints were like, why are you bringing these wild kids in here? Because here's the other thing. Man, thank you, Lord. All children are different. Any mothers in here? You see some of your children, you wonder if they came out the same womb. Am I right? Can I tell you a secret? We all different. Satan in this cookie-cutter world? He tried to get us to be dissatisfied with the real us. And especially do it to our millennials and Generation Z and adults through social media. You realize when people are posting things, you realize they're posting things and they may have taken 100 pictures. 
airbrushed it, and then that's the one they're going to post to get you to think that they all that in a bag of chips, and they're not. So one of the things that you and I have to understand, like I'm different from my brothers. I've said this before. All right. I'm going I'm to give you all a little insight. I don't want you all to leave the church. I'm going to be honest with you. And I've said this before. I was kicked out of school in third grade. Why are you laughing like that? I'm sensitive, right? I'm just joking. No, true story. I was kicked out. And Cornet Word was the name of the school. Sister, I, uh, Anitra, <laughs> the nun called my mother, because I got two older brothers that are there. I got my oldest brother, who is about six years older than me. My middle brother, who we're about 18 months apart, two grades ahead of me. The nun called my mother and says, uh, we need you to come get Aeneas. The other two can stay. But where we don't know where he's going, but you got to get him out of here. You know, one of the things that we don't realize, and I like to walk through, if you're uncomfortable because of COVID and all that, I've been vaccinated. I know some other things. Well, people have been vaccinated. They got it. You got the blood of Jesus in here too. Now, if I need to put on a mask, I'll do that, and I'll stay a little distance, but I need you to hear me. I don't want you to get distracted. You know how much trauma? I never thought about this. Because sometimes we think things are a regular part of life. You know, it never dawned on me trauma that may have caused me as a child. I never really thought about that. I would joke and I'd say it like, man, I can't believe what God has done. They were kicking me out of third grade. Do you guys realize when I, when I realize I possibly... Can you imagine? They saying your two older brothers good, but you not. Can I tell you a secret? When I realized that possibly caused me inner trauma, y'all know when I realized it? You know when I realized it, Jackie? I just realized it. In the middle of this teaching. See, we have things that happen to us that injure us, and we don't even realize it. So we get born again, but we don't get free. So we get born again, but continue dysfunction that we're hiding. Because I'm starting to believe all of us are addicts. I'm not an addict. I haven't snored any drugs. I haven't done eat. How about, how about shopaholic? How about young people you game in? Yeah, how about you can't get off social media? I, I like, we're called to raise up a wise and understanding people. The Bible tells you why things are happening. And you got to think about this. If I make money off you being sick, do I really want you to be well? Humans under Satan's influence seem to hate each other. You would sell me food that's going to make me sick and then charge me to make me well. You know that got to be crazy. Who besides a fool would make available the type of food that we call fast food? Who would do that to humans who love each other? Who would cause and sell to a human a cigarette and then tell them on the box it's going to kill you? Only someone that's under the influence of Satan's spirit. Who would cause lies to be believed, offenses to take place in families? When brothers wouldn't get along. Who would cause a husband and a wife who would, you didn't go to the altar to get a divorce. You just stand there thinking to death do us part 
and we're going to get a divorce. You didn't go there because somebody put a gun to your head. You went there because you thought this was a partner and we're going to live together. You just later find out there's an enemy in the house. I just realized the trauma. How about when you see your cousin Avery laying across the tracks dead? You never pay attention to him. Because do you know to some people, like this normal. Like there are other people, <laughs> like I don't know y'all, but like if they just have shooting in y'all neighborhood and just all of a sudden people shoot. I don't know. Y'all probably move. Would you think about moving? Right. Most people move out of stuff like that. <laughs> they don't go around making rap songs, singing about this life. Because this crazy. To be in a middle class part of Holly Grove, your best friend, Orlando, I use names because of these true stories. This is how you read the Bible. Anytime you see Jesus telling parables with your stories, he doesn't use names. Anytime he uses names, that means it's a real story. The rich man and Lazarus, the rich man did not in his lifetime bless this poor Lazarus as a, at his house. Then he dies. He goes into hell. Abraham goes, I'm sorry, Lazarus goes into Abraham's bo bosom. This rich man now is in hell and has regret and realized, I should have helped this man. And he didn't. But it was too late. So my best friend Orlando's brother, Robert, on Mother's Day, they big crowd, they're all hanging out in the family. I'm still talking about trauma. I'm still talking about what we're going to deal with today. You are gods and small g, but it's time to receive your healing. Because too many of us, including me, have had things, addictions, we functional because most of us know how to function in our dysfunction. Am I in the right place? Right. Some of us are a hot mess. Right? Dangerous thing about being in church, if you got religious people here who are not hearing from God and, and there's not true heart repentance and leadership, the, in the pew is going to reproduce what's in that pulpit. And if that person is not free, it'll be hard for them <laughs> to lead you to freedom. So Orlando and Robert, his brother, in the back having a great time with his family, his mo their mother, person knocks on the door, asks Orlando, my best friend, comes to the door. He says, is Robert here? So oh, yeah. So he goes get his brother Robert. They tell both of them to come out on the porch, put them face down, and Robert is executed. And you don't think that impacts the soul? He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. They're starting to get a better understanding in the human psychology that humans, it's all connected. They're calling it uh, mental health, but it's really wholeness that we're looking for. It's not just the mind that's at this ease. It's trauma inside of us. You didn't come to get saved James, you didn't come to just get saved. In other words, I'm out the prison, but I still live like a prisoner. Where's the freedom? The prison door is open. Why am I still sitting in it? Why did I get declared by the actual federal government to be free, but had to wait to Juneteenth? to get the information. That's how a lot of believers are. We've been liberated. 
but we haven't gotten a revelation of it. So it's almost like another Juneteenth. I come to set us into a new season. I said earlier, this will be seasons where addictions and things like that will be taken away from you because of the power, not because of your will, because you can't do it. That's the hardest way to do it. You trying to, I'm a, have you ever, has ever, anybody ever seen an apple tree straining to have apples? He said, if you're led by the Spirit, these are the fruits you're going to see. He said, the works of the flesh are these, but the fruit. He said, the works of the fruit. He said, the works of the flesh are these. We don't want that, right? And then he said, the fruit of being led by the Spirit. Fruit. I don't strain to have fruit. So see my, so now my best friend, trauma. By the way, my parents never knew this. I was carrying a gun to school after that, his gun, because he wasn't sure if because he saw it, that gunman wouldn't think about coming and eventually killing him. True story. My parents never knew this. My cousin, when I was in the league, like my second or third year, my cousin called me and said, I need you to get me out of jail. For what? Murder. Murder. They found my beeper on a deceased person. True story. My dad's brother, Uncle Leroy was a millionaire, very well read, smart guy, sent us to Angola for life, for distribution of heroin. I was fortunate and blessed to get him out a year before he dies. Somebody say trauma. Now, that's part of my story. First time I had sex, third grade. Somebody say trauma. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody say big trauma. <laughs> I'll get to yours. Yeah. No, what I mean is, when you don't understand this, you make harsh judgments about people. You don't know what they've been through. I used to say, how does God forgive people? Anybody, do you know if you ask him questions, he'll answer you. This is a personal relationship. How do you know? We have access to what Martha had access to. So in Luke chapter 10, what's your name? What is it? Xander with a Z? X, Xander, got you. What grade are you in? Going into your junior year? Um, you unusual. Like you unusual. Not weird. Unusual. Meaning you've been chosen in your generation to be an unusual leader. And he's going to fill you with his spirit. And you're going to lead many. Like, you're go, you will be in positions of influence. And you, go, you will steward it well because he's going to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Thus says the Lord, Xander. Is that it? Thank you. So we all have... Would everybody agree? Maybe you won't want to say this like, 
Would everybody agree possibly? I like the way I could say it. That way you could feel good about saying it. Could it possibly be that all of us, all of us are addicts in some areas? Can we get university, uh, universal? Right. Right. Could be gaming. Could be anger. I mean, it's all kind of stuff. I can kind of tell you mine. So when you go through this trauma, there, uh, as they start studying the brain and being able to scan it, naturally they're figuring out what God already knew. He already knew. Adam caused all of us to have the uh, propensity toward being addicted to something because of what he did. How do you know? As <laughs> soon as Adam disobeyed, within the next generation was murder. Cain and Abel. The next, like, you know the interesting thing? I'm going to trip y'all out. <laughs> Do y'all know there's not a whole lot of good families in the Bible? I don't know if y'all ever thought about that. Y'all know in the Bible, it's a lot of dysfunction. Like even Jesus, that wasn't Joseph's boy. Y'all, we read into the story, oh, praise God, Joseph. Do you know after Jesus is born, we don't hear much about Joseph. We don't know what Joseph was dealing with. <laughs> boy, that, that, man, that boy don't look like you, Joseph. <laughs> you know, we don't think about this. Like we think, oh, man, I was the Messiah. That's God. That's Jesus. We think, oh. I mean, I'm Jewish people. They were very, Jewish people are very, most, and I'm not doing a generalization. They were taught to be very truthful. They were taught by God through Abraham. Always verify stuff. Don't ever just let somebody tell you something. Always verify. All, the other thing, all God did, he took Abraham, the Jewish people, not because they were special, but because he chose his buddy, his friend Abraham, to bring the Messiah through his lineage. And then the Messiah being preserved through his lineage would eventually save the Gentiles, which are us, and then give us access to God's characteristics. Jay, Jay, I'll take you to Genesis chapter 1, and I'll tell you, I'll show you one of the basic principles that caused God to be highly successful. Y'all ready for it? <laughs> See, in the, in, the, in the beginning, the earth was dark, and then God said, let there be, and then there was. What's the next thing after he says that? Said, it was what? It was what? Now, most people miss that. It was dark. So, one thing we learned, he does not talk about the problem. All I'm doing, you, you know what I'm really teaching y'all? How to stunt like your daddy. Yes, yes, yes. Now, for 40 and over, y'all don't understand, <laughs> right? How to stunt like your daddy. Begin to understand you are, you, are, you are a little God. You have his characteristics, right? He says, it's dark, so we learn from it. He didn't talk about how dark it was. He identified the problem. Then he spoke the solution. Let there be. And then he said, what, sister? It's what? Guess what? God checked his work. God checked his work. How many of us don't check? I'll work. How many of us talk about how dark it is? Let me help you. Addict, addiction. Addiction is the craving and the desire to do something to soothe the pain. So what they're learning in psychology circles don't pay so much attention to the addiction. Find out what's the pain. Yeah. 
Now, let me give you a definition of addict, where it comes from. In Rome, if you owed money and you couldn't pay it, <laughs> you couldn't file bankruptcy. You couldn't file Chapter 11. You, have to be, you had to become the slave to the person that you owed. You were assigned to them. That's where the word addict comes from. Assigned. To be a slave in some area because of the debt that Adam put on us. And because Adam put that debt on us, Jesus, the last Adam, paid for it. Can you imagine still sending money to the company and you already paid for the vehicle? Jesus has paid the bill for your pain. That's why he had to feel the pain. When they put, they try to put that, that gall or what was that they tried to give him? The vinegar. And he wouldn't take it. Why wouldn't he take it? It was said that if you had vinegar, it could possibly numb the pain. He had to feel the pain of the cross for us. He had to be wounded for our transgressions. When we break the law, he had to be wounded. He had to be uh, chastised, uh, 39 stripes. That's why it says, by his, we are. He did it. He had to take it. He had to carry it. Bruised. A wound, usually you can see. A bruise goes on the soul. You watch a fighter, <laughs> and you see them hitting each other. But you don't realize body blows. And all of a sudden, a, f a fighter that looks strong drops. And you're like, what happened? You thought the fighter was losing because the fighter was all bloody. That other fighter that was bloody was hitting body blows. So it wasn't as obvious that this fighter was in trouble. But when you know anything about the body, it's the body blows that eventually will cause the fight to end. How do you get body blows on your spirit? That's what's happening to us. That's why he says, stay away from rumors. Oh, what dainty morsels rumors are. They go deep into the soul. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it is how you're going to deal with life. We're entering into a season where we're going to put light on the darkness. Because if you don't put light on the darkness, you and I will continue in it. Like for me, some of my things that showed I had trauma, I didn't know this. Like stealing. I'd go into AMP grocery store. I can say this because AMP is no AMP, they're no longer in business. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm just a truthful cat. I learned, man. Transparency leads to transformation. Amen. I'm gonna say it again. Transparency leads to what? Transformation. I'm gonna say it again. Transparency. Some of us not honest. Like, I don't know how to be a daddy. Well, who are you talking about? I go to him, that's how I talk. I don't know how to be no pastor. I go to him and I talk. <laughs> Some of us trying to make something look like a way, and people already know. <laughs> Most people don't tell you. I'm shocked how many people don't tell you that you got something in your teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> they didn't know in the first service, I came out here with my pants unzipped. And our team caught it and put it on the screen. 
You know that's what God does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you embarrassed? No. Once you know what humanity is, what you embarrassed about? I remember I would trip and my, my kids would laugh. I said, I didn't fall. I'm an athlete. <laughs> Nothing wrong with tripping. He said, just man, fall down seven, seven times, but do what? Get back, Get back up. Don't let anybody put any pressure on you trying to live this perfect life. He already loves you. Think about this. He prepared everything perfectly before Adam was made. It was all for us. And then this doggone devil, Satan, gets the person who's in charge to listen to him. He sells us out. So now there's a long history of the depravity and the downward spiral of humans. Then Jesus arrives on the scene, the Savior, to get us out this mess, to get us out this false pretense, to get us out having money but still not having a, being a person. All of these false things, giving you peace, giving you joy, giving you true love, honesty in a marriage, honesty with each other. So I go in a &P. So before I got born again, before you get born again, you use your talents in illegal ways. I had the calling of a business person. Except I was taking this business to a &P and making them partners but not telling them. <laughs> they, didn't know, they, they didn't know they were my partners. <laughs> They didn't know i get my product from them. <laughs> I didn't think if I told them, they'd let me get it. So that's what made me take it, right? Y'all see how we laughing with this? All of us got dysfunction in some kind of way like this, right? So I would, I would get packs of Snickers, like they six in a, in a pack, and then I'd get the other stuff. And then I would go to Woodson, Carter G. Woodson, where I went to school with Birdman. His name is Brian Williams. He's the father of Lil Wayne in a rap business. We went to school together, one of the worst schools, junior high schools in all of New Orleans, across from the Magnolia Project. It's the third ward. I'm from the 17th, you heard me? <laughs> so 17th in the third? You better be careful. Because in New Orleans, it's not like St. Louis where y'all talk about schools. It's about what ward you from. In the third ward, they had like three projects. My teammate, trauma, go back to trauma. I'm telling you, all this stuff coming to me right now, I had no idea. Because I started trying to figure out why I'm so numb. Like, I don't really get it bothered by death. I don't, I don't like, I don't necessarily like funerals. But like certain things that people feel, I don't necessarily feel. But you don't know why. My teammate Don Peters got shot. We practiced in inside Shakespeare Park, which is across the street from Woodson. Don Peters, somebody, there's some cats fighting on the outside of Ferret in Washington. They fighting. We see them. This not, no, is not abnormal to us. People always fighting. So somebody yelling in the park, Don, your brother. Don's from the Mal Malfamine Project, which is about six blocks from the Magnolia. Some cats from the Magnolia is fighting Don's brother from the Malfamine. They're yelling apart, Don! By the way, Don was like Ray Lewis. Don had the ability like a Ray Lewis. He was that good in junior high school. Don goes out while all of us are laying flat in the park. They start shooting as they run down to where the park was, all of us on the ground, Don gets up, go out in the street, and start fighting with him. He gets shot. Junior high school. Junior high school. So how do you get rid of this? How do you get healed from this? The blood of Jesus? To the degree you understand it? To the degree you understand why he had to stay on the cross? To deliver us. Not just out of this world, but to get us whole. He healed lepers. Leper is a, is a symbolic term for sinners. He's the only one that could heal a leper. He's the only one can heal 
what came in your life as a result of the sin. For some people, it was a half an arm. Some people were born lepers. For others, they were born a lady had five husbands and then was living with the other guy. Y'all remember that? So her addiction was with men. Then there was another lady with an alabaster box of, of ointment that was in a house of a religious Pharisee named Simon that got the seat of Savior and began washing his feet and crying because God had revealed to that lady, this is the way you can get this off of you. Another lady, issue of blood. That's how the addict, that's how the addiction appeared in her generation. She had unusual flow of blood. And the trip part, she had spent all her money with the physicians, but they couldn't help her because she needed to see the great physician. And she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Another lady named Martha, he's in her house. Can you imagine this? Fellas, who, who, all y'all play sports, right? What's one guy if in your sport you say, man, if I can just meet with him? Anybody come to mind? Jordan? Burroughs? And you say, man, if I could just see him, right? So think about this. The person who created Jordan Burroughs is in Martha's house. So think about this. If I can give you the person who created him and put him in your house, do you think that would be a little better? That would be pretty cool, huh? He was in Martha's house. My sister, he was in Martha's house. Did you hear me? Her sister Mary is in there. But only one out of the two know what to focus on in that priority in that moment. He's in Martha's house. He's in Martha's house for a reason. Can you imagine God coming to your house? Like, like you're saying that kind of calm. Can you imagine God like being in your house? He's in her house. And what is she doing? Washing dishes, cooking, running around that house, <laughs> trying to clean up the stuff she stuffed under the, under the, uh, in the closet. And she dusted God is in her house. Now, he probably not going to be there long. <laughs> Would everybody agree? He probably won't be there that long. He is God. He's like running like planets we don't even know about, right? <laughs> so he probably not going to be there very long, right? So wouldn't we think we should prioritize this moment, the person who created the moon, the sun, the stars, who created humans, who's the light to everybody that comes into the world? Wouldn't it be a good idea to stop my busyness and find out, why are you here? Why would God come to my house? He's always purposeful. He's not coming to your house to hang. <laughs> I'm just hanging. He's, he's so purposeful. He, he's, he's productive, never busy. Always at haste, never in a hurry. When I play cornerback through praying in the Holy Spirit, I try I attempt to get you guys to get filled with the Holy Spirit. I'd be praying in the Holy Spirit. Hey, the little boy, shana la ma. One of the jobs the Holy Spirit does is bring things to your remembrance. I have over 55 interceptions in the regular season, over 60, including the postseason. Most of them, I knew the play was coming. Because the Holy Spirit brings things back to your remembrance. All my seniors, stop claiming you're forgetting stuff. Stop claiming old age. Caleb said when he was 80, I've taken this mountain because I feel like I'm 40. You heard me? Young people, Joseph knew his assignment at 17 years old. It's personal. That's what I'm closing with. God told me to tell this group this second session, it's personal. I'm going to say it again. It's personal. I don't care how old you are, it's personal. Devil been messing with you? 
It's personal. Yeah. Been, been tricking you to mess up your money because you don't understand it yet. It's personal. I'm getting ready to take you through finances. He's going to teach you to understand money. You're going to take care. Your weight you've been dealing with, thinking about all of that. Mm -mm. Jesus sitting in Martha's house. Baby, I'm here because it's personal. That's why I'm here. It's personal. I didn't come here for you to serve me. I'm here serving now. When I go, you have, you can serve. But while I'm here, I'm serving. So I say, God. Martha comes to him, and, he, and she says, Master. Now, we already got a problem. Because she called him Master, but she getting ready to tell him what to do. That's a problem. Somebody say, that's a problem. You don't tell masters what to do. Master, don't you care that my sister has left me doing all this busy work? Come tell her, get busy with me. Jesus looks at her. Martha, Martha. I'm prophetically talking to you, ma'am. Because Martha means lady, lady. You are encumbered and busy about a lot of things. But only one thing is needful. And your sister Mary, she's chosen the most important thing. So I say, Lord. What were you talking to Mary about? The things that pertain to Mary and what I've called her to do. He says, Aeneas says, seek first the kingdom of God. Do what I tell you to do. And if you have questions, ask me questions. Why are you numb, Aeneas? I guess so. You saw Avery dead. Your best friend and brother executed. Your teammate shot. I guess you would be numb. But I took it on the cross to heal you from the pain that's driving you to this coping mechanism. Now, the world will charge you to cope with it. He's looking to get rid of it because he knows the pain to be born again, to stand up here but still not be free. But if you're humble, he'll work in and through you yes. while you're matriculating through this journey called life. Yes. I'm telling y'all right now, the best is yet to come. Yes. I'm going to say it again. The best is yet to, some of you are going to recognize your triggers. There's certain things that trigger you. Certain things trigger me. He's going to show you. No, that's not it. No, no. Your husband not telling you beautiful because he dealing with something. So I need you in this season to tell yourself you beautiful. <laughs> Physician, he'll die himself. For this season, don't put that pressure of the Lord on your spouse. They're not committed and they're not called to handle that. Nobody else could be your Lord. Not your children, your spouse, your boyfriend, your nanny, mammy, whatever you use. He's a healer. I said he's a healer. You're no longer assigned to that addiction. If you sit down, take communion, and remember the blood of Jesus has been placed on the mercy seat, paid the price for our liberation. So when that addiction starts talking, you and I need to start talking. No, we've been set free. I got it now, Satan. Because he's a thief. Last statement. What's the uniqueness about a thief? What's the unique characteristic about a thief? Typically, 
you don't know a thief is stolen from you until later. I'm going to say it again. The thief has been stealing some of our health, our peace, our joy. And what does a thief do? Takes it while we're unaware of it. What does the master do? He puts a light on the thief to let him know, I see you now. You got my stuff. Now you can see it. Now you know. It wasn't your sister. It wasn't your daddy and everything and your mama. Everybody did wrong. It started with Adam. It came through everybody else. So stop blaming. Forgive and realize that dysfunction started with Adam. And it expresses, its, well, it, it expresses itself in different ways in all of our generations. But you're like Harry Truman, for those that are 60 and over. The buck stops here. If you would learn to how to apply the blood of Jesus, you will stop these things in your generation, and it will no longer pass to prior generations, and I'm speaking up to seven generations, that he would give you and I the opportunity to change the game. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We know the thief is Satan, a.k.a. the devil. We know Jesus is the good shepherd. We know that he has paid the price for our liberation. Not only are we saved, but we are delivered. And we need to start speaking like delivered people in Jesus' name. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to hear your voice today. And now I ask those that you've spoken to their hearts to get saved today. I give the invitation, if you're here, you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to respond to this invitation by raising your hand and say, Pastor, there's a voice saying to me, respond to this message. I'm responding. I'm getting saved today. Who am I talking with? Would you raise your hand? One, two, three. This is an inside job. The Holy Spirit speaks to you. I see your hands. Once you put them up, you can put them down. I acknowledge them. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How about this one? A lot of us are born again, but is it time to rededicate your life? Is it time now to realize, I, because of pandemic, addiction, all of these things, I have a better understanding. Now, you may not know how to walk in victory yet. But the enemy is trying to lie to you, tell you God's through with you, try to give you condemnation, try to lay you down with guilt, all of those things. And I want everybody to look up real quick. Do you know if you don't get guilt off you, you don't get guilt off you? Excuse me for a sec. Look at me. Do you know if you don't get guilt off you, you will do things to self-sabotage yourself automatically? If you don't get guilt off of you, and how do you get guilt off of you? By being honest and confessing your sin and forsaking it, saying, God, I'm turning from this. Not confessing it and we just go back and do the same thing. And I'm, I will teach about that. Feel the offense of God. Any sin, regardless, is an offense to God. And sometimes we only, we have what's called worldly sorrow because we only repent when somebody catches us. Versus every time we do it, it's an offense to God because if nobody else sees it but you and God, he's offended. That's where repentance start in here. That's how you get whole. When you see it, when you think it. Because as soon as you think it, if you don't deal with it, you're going to act it out. So if you start catching it in here and repenting, so what am I calling you? I'm calling you to the real you. When you start sensing this, start uh, thinking about this, that's when they repent. Oh, Lord, I've sinned. Not when you did it. But when it comes to you, now you say, because how many of y'all know we can have a whole conversation inside? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Right? Like all these thoughts are becoming, and we just let them run instead of now, oh, no, I repent of that. No, 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 no. You got to start catching this stuff before, because if we don't catch it, we're going to act it out. All the body does is act out what we've been meditating in the mind. 
That's why he says the person think it, so are they. He collapsed. Lost all his money. House got burned down. Then next time he lost cattle, he lost everything. Then like the third time, Satan went and Satan killed his children. Then like the fourth time or third time, the final thing Satan did to him was attack his body. And then his, his wife was cool when they lost the children, lost the money. And, and lo- when they, even when they lost the children, she still seemed to be hanging in there. But when she saw the boils on him and he was sick, y'all know what homegirl said? Man, won't you curse God and die? Enough of this. Because homegirl had had enough. Do you know when Satan was allowed to touch his body, he had already lost all of his wealth, lost his children. Now he's being attacked in his body. The wife said, man, why are you? You're not going to cur- curse God and die. Joe said, you talk like a foolish woman. When we had everything rolling, you didn't say this. But now that we're going through some test, calamity, you talking about curse God and die? I said, no. Can anybody tell me what was Job's response? Y'all know what Job did? He got down and began to worship God in the midst of this challenge. He got down and began to worship and made a statement based on what he knew, which wasn't the truth. He says, God give it and God take it away. Blessed be the name of God. Now we know, because we get insight into who was doing it. God allowed it, but it was Satan doing it. Job didn't know that. He just was thinking, man, God gave me a lot. And look like he's taking it. Even though we know God didn't do it, Job knew if Satan even did it, God had to have allowed it. So God must be up to something. And he's up to a lot in a lot of our lives. Some of you all are in this, some of you all are in immense pressure. That's a sure sign. That your, your, your deliverance draw nigh. Start worshiping. Start worshiping. Start worshiping. Start worshiping. Start praising him. Start blessing him in the midst of this foolishness. And watch what he does. I'm telling you, that's a prophetic word in here. Start. I would be so nervous. I remember we're playing the Cleveland Browns on a Monday night. And I hated late games because you had to sit in the hotel all day. And man, I would start worshiping because I used to be fearful. I used to be fearful, Xander. I used to be fearful. Like Randy Moss, tw- tw- people, Moss, he Moss and folk. And I get down and I worship in my hotel room. I say, God, you're awesome. You're glorious. Then I read the Psalms. God, you're amazing. You're almighty. You're perfect. You're just. And do you know the more I magnified, the more I called out what he was? the more I knew who I was. And then I would go out there. I did this before the division round playing against Green Bay Packers. Same thing. Pastor KBN, he prophesied that in that playoff year when I was with the Rams, I would have unusual success. Pastor KBN, right here, who's around here as the, the worship pastor here, creative pastor. Yeah, right here. True story. He said this before it happened. God want to tell you stuff ahead of, st- ahead of time so you can have better expectation. Because if you just live based on what you see today, you'll end up depressed. But if you, he can show you what he sees in you tomorrow while you're living out today, guess what you will do? You'd endure it better. You'd put more of a smile on your face. So I would worship in my hotel. We play the, the Green Bay Packers. Brett Favre must have thought I had a Packer jersey on. He threw me two interceptions. One Xander he threw right to me. He must have thought I was his receiver. But that's what God does. I'm only saying this because it's personal. That's what I didn't know when I was 10 years old at the church. They didn't tell me this is a personal God who loves us, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're doing, how many times we messed it up, he's still there. 
Here's a COVID reminder. As we see in the uptick in those things, please still pay attention to all where you're going. We're here. We're still, to, for the most part, physical distance. We can't do everything perfect. Do the part we can. And then trust God with the blood of Jesus. Use wisdom. Use wisdom. If you're not feeling good, stay home. Right? <laughs> Don't come in here because if you come in here, you're doing all that sneezing. We will lead you out. <laughs> Not because we're scared. We don't want everybody to miss the message because you're sneezing, right? Right. All this is just, just practical things. What I'm saying is we fear nothing. We're not afraid. But we do use wisdom. Amen? You're now turned over into the uh, hands of the ushers. I pronounce a blessing over each and every one of you all. Thank you for coming out today. If electricity is out in your neighborhood, I call it to be back on in Jesus' name. Father God, reveal.